What's up YouTube? Chris Baker here from the band Rugby. Today I've got some LP Aspire bongos. And these heads are completely trashed. So we're going to put some new heads on these, but not just any heads. We're going to put real calfskin and mule skin rounds on these. We're going to have to soak them for probably 5-10 hours and get them fitted properly. So without further ado, play that intro. All right, guys, these are what you call bongos. All right, so what we got here is we got a head that is a little bit bigger than this one. This bigger one is called the Hembra, okay? Small one is called the Macho. They've got different properties. You want to have a thinner head on the Hembra than you do on the Macho. So what I did was I hopped on the Internet, and I hooked over to Reverb.com, and I found myself two actual skin heads. Gets kind of that vintage sound. I'm looking for more of a vintage sound myself. I want to get like back in the day sound. So nothing sounds more back in the day than real heads, I'm assuming. This one is our rawhide calfskin head. A little bit thinner than our other head. $30 shipped from 63rd Street Percussion on Reverb.com. This one is for the Hembra, which is the larger drum. This is the other head. This is a mule skin. And this one's slightly thicker, a little bit thicker, and is designed for the Macho, which is the smaller drum. $34 shipped, also from 63rd Street Percussion on Reverb. That means together, to get both of these, about 64 bucks. So not the cheapest thing to get into if you want to try some vintage heads, I would say, but we'll see if it's worth it. Our next step is to stick these in the bathtub for five to eight hours to get them all moisturized and ready to be stretched onto the drum. So without further ado, let's take you to that step. All right, so the first step is to get to the hoops inside of the old heads. So we got to get to the heads. First thing is take off all your rubber nubs and remove the lugs one by one. All right, once you get your heads out, we're gonna try to get to this metal hoop in the inside. That is going to be difficult to do unless these heads are soaked in some water where they'll become much more malleable. So that's what we're gonna do next. We're gonna throw these in with the new heads into some warm water. Not hot, not cold, just some tempered water. And let that soak for a good long time and we'll come back in a little bit and take it from there. Since I got some time to kill while those were soaking, I decided I might as well clean these bongos up. So I got some Windex and I'm going to town. It's interesting, once I got these heads off, I realized there's a date here, May 5th, 2007. So I guess these bongos were made in 2007. So they're kind of older, if you will. So let's go ahead. Oh my god, I dropped my Windex! Anyway, let's go ahead and uh, clean these hoops out while we're at it. Okay, so after about six hours, these heads are really easy to pull apart. They become extremely gross and mucousy, and uh, you can just kind of get in there and rip the rings right out. Okay, now that you've got the hoops out, we're going to go grab the new heads. Give them a good shake. Right, first thing is to determine which side is softer. 
as the man says, you want the soft side up. That's the side that you will be touching when you play. So you want that to be the soft side. You're going to tuck it in to the hoop like this on all sides. Make sure it's even as you can. And then we're going to put the rim on top of that. This is called tucking. Tucking the skin. And you're going to pull it through the best you can. Alright, and then we're going to do the same thing to the macho. Determine which side softer, get yourself centered really well with the ring and the rim, and pull it through. Tucking is pretty freaking hard to do, I have to say. It's a little bit easier if you've got a pair of pliers you can use to help pull some of the edges. But this is definitely why people like to use pre-made heads. They're ready to go. You don't have to go through all this. Honestly, like, I would even say after doing this that I probably would have soaked the heads a little bit longer. Six hours worked pretty well, but it was tough to get these heads on. You'll see. hard part's over. After that I went around the whole thing with a pair of pliers again and made sure that the tension across the entire drum head was as even as possible. Looks like there's a spot right there that needs a little bit more tension. Okay, now that that's done, flip them over and just put a tiny, tiny bit of pressure. We're talking about basically completely untuned, just enough just to keep a little tiny bit of shape to the heads as they dry. If you tune these at all up, it's possible you can rip the heads as the skin dries. So you really, really don't want to do that. You want these to be loose. You just want them to basically pull the shape they're supposed to as they dry. Here's a nice overhead view of what we've got so far. Looking good. What, what, what is that, hair? Oh my god, is that freaking hair? That's disgusting! My very soul is weeping! Ew. Anyway, you want to grab yourself a pair of scissors after that. Because you're going to cut off all these excess skin bits. All these skinny big skin skins. I had two dull pairs of scissors, that was all I had. So it took me quite a while to get all around the whole thing and make sure it was done well. So make sure you got something sharp, because these are quite thick. All right, guys, we got the new heads on these things. Let's uh, get it tuned. Okay, this is a couple days later. You really want to make sure you give these heads at least 24 hours to completely dry and get seated properly to their new home on top of your bongos. Tuning your bongos is supposed to be done in a counterclockwise fashion, so you just go in basically a circle pattern around the lugs. Maybe like a quarter turn each time, bringing the pitch up slowly. But I had a really hard time with this. I did that for these heads, but they were just totally not in tune with themselves. A lot of really weird warbles and pitch issues, because the heads weren't seated like the same on all the lugs. Uh, so I spent a long time trying to just adjust, make small adjustments here and there, trying to get all the heads to be correct, but it really gave me a hard time.
My wife absolutely loved listening to me mess with these things, tapping on them for two hours straight. That was, uh, that went over really well. Alright guys, well that concludes the bongo test of the natural skinheads. Um, I have to say after I've put them on and installed them and kind of messed with them a little bit, uh, I will say that I don't know if natural skins was the best way to go, at least for me, since these are cheaper bongos, they're already kind of uh, not the best sounding, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. I was really trying to hope these would sound like kind of like old school, like James Brown old school. I figured like in the 60s and stuff, those guys were probably using real skinheads still. Um, but these um, sound good. I don't think they sound bad, but they don't sound as uh, high pitched as like the synthetic heads that you can get today or like some of the prepared heads that you get where they're ready to roll and you just slap them on. The other problem is that this, the Hembra specifically, was really, really tough for me to tune. Uh, I took two hours yesterday like trying to get this thing to be evenly tuned across the whole thing. I had a whole bunch of weird overtones and stuff. And then today I spent an additional two, like not maybe not two hours, but another hour at least, just messing with these, trying to get them evenly tuned. But you know, now that I've just did that demo a minute ago and I had these just sitting, this actually sounds better than it did earlier. I think they just need some time to seat maybe, but you gotta play them and they gotta kind of fit onto the, onto the room better. Um, I did read online that they do sound better possibly after you play them for a while, so that might be a plausible thing. Additionally, the rim itself here uh, is probably bent, honestly. I didn't really look at it when I had it off, but it's very possible that it's not exactly straight considering I had the other head on here before super torqued down and it was all sideways and like I had literally, I was beating the thing with drumsticks and throwing the back of vans for some bands I used to play in uh, about five or six years ago, I really wasn't being very nice to them, so it's very possible that the bent, but uh, now they're sounding better. Uh, I will definitely say once again that they're not as high pitched as or as piercing as you get out of the new modern heads, uh, but if that's what you're going for, this is kind of what they sound like, and uh, it might be what you're looking for, I don't know. But uh, it was a good experiment, I'm glad I did it, I learned a lot, and thanks for watching. Uh, let me know what you think. If you thought these heads sounded good or not, I would like to know. Uh, or how you would do it differently. Like I said, I'm just an amateur guy just trying to figure out how to do it. So, yeah, give me some comments. Tell me what you think. Uh, yep, I'll be doing more videos like this in the future. And so if you like it, maybe subscribe. See you on the next one.
Mm-hmm.